It is Friday. It's the 28th of June. I'm Monita Rajpal. This is CNN News Center, live from Hong Kong, making news today. Nelson Mandela continues his struggle in hospital while his family say they are fighting for their privacy. On Thursday, his eldest daughter lashed out at the media coverage of her father's health, saying journalists were behaving like vultures. Meanwhile, Mandela is still in critical condition. Errol Barnett joins mm -hmm. us from outside the hospital in Pretoria, where Mandela is being treated. Errol, there's still a lot of activity out there. We're told that Mr. Mandela is in stable condition, but that's pretty much it. Yeah, Manita, it's been three full weeks now. The former president has been uh, in the hospital behind me. Thank you very much for that. Errol Barnett reporting to us there from Pretoria. And as Errol was mentioning, uh, U.S. President Barack Obama is traveling to South Africa later this Friday. It'll be uh, the second stop on his tour of sub-Saharan Africa. After you're watching CNN News Center live from Hong Kong. After you are watching CNN News Center live from Hong Kong. I'm Monita Rajpal. Some of the stories that we're following for you here on the show, the U.S. Senate has pushed through a sweeping overhaul of immigration laws. The legislation could pave the way to citizenship for millions of undocumented residents, but the bill still faces possible defeat when it goes to Congress. More leaks, and this time from within the circle of trust. A source tells CNN that a retired U.S. general is under investigation over material published in a book by a New York Times correspondent. NBC News reports that uh, James, uh, General James Cartwright is suspected of leaking classified information about the Stuxnet virus uh, that infected computers in Iran's nuclear facilities. A federal grand jury has indicted Zokar Sarnayev on 30 counts uh, related to the Boston Marathon bombings. The charges include use of a weapon of mass destruction and killing four people. More than half the charges against Sarnayev could result in the death penalty or life in prison. State media in China are reporting more ethnic violence in the country's western region of uh, Xinjiang. Uh, tensions between ethnic uh, Han Chinese and the area's predominantly Muslim Uyghurs have led to frequent clashes. State media report 35 people were killed when mobs armed with knives attacked police stations. The Germany-based World Uyghur Congress says communications with Uyghurs in the region have been shut down. The U.S. is suspending certain trade privileges with Bangladesh because, because of labor and safety violations in the country's garment industry. Bangladesh's labor laws have been under intense scrutiny after a massive factory collapse killed more than 1,000 people earlier this year. Experts say the action is largely symbolic, does not include the textile industry, and will affect less than 1% of the country's exports. The Reuters news agency is reporting that Indonesia is building criminal cases against eight companies it believes caused the dangerous haze over Singapore and Malaysia last week. The smoke from first fires caused the worst air pollution crisis in Southeast Asia in 16 years. The fires are thought to have started on land owned by palm oil plantations. Well, let's uh, take a look at the weather conditions in Southeast Asia and, of course, the rest of the region. Our meteorologist, Mar Mari Ramos, is at the World Weather Center with more on that. Hi, Mari. Hello, Monita. Yeah, those, uh, those pictures are amazing. When you think of all that smoke and all that haze, it's just awful. I want to show you a, a picture from uh, uh, back from June of 2012. And okay. Mari, thank you very much. Sure. The U.S. Supreme Court delivered two significant rulings on same-sex marriage earlier this week. More and more countries are legalizing gay marriage, but that still leaves many parts of the world where it's absolutely not on the agenda. Stephen Jiang brings us the view from China. These two young men blending with a crowd at the local village. We're there. watching CNN News Center live from Hong Kong. Coming up, day five at Wimbledon is set to showcase two British stars and uh, very British weather. We'll have that and much more after. You are watching CNN News Center live from Hong Kong. It is day five at Wimbledon, and the men's number one and two are still in the running. Fingers crossed. But the leading women aren't doing so well, and the weather isn't looking too good either. Christina McFarlane joins us now from the All England Club in London. Hi there, Christina. It certainly is a very dramatic Wimbledon this year. 
Absolutely, it is, Minita. And, well, as for the rain, we were expecting it to come sometime, but it's finally come to day five here at Wimbledon. And, unfortunately... Hopefully he breezes through, unlike, you know, the other number one seeded, or former number ones, I should say. Christina, thank you very much for that. Christina McFarlane there at Wimbledon. Now, rain or shine, they continue to cycle. It is the world's most famous cycling competition. And on Saturday, top athletes will start a grueling three weeks vying for the yellow jersey in the Tour de France. But the epic challenge comes after a year of drug scandals. Now Amanda Davis joins us from Porto Vecchio, where the race begins in just over 24 hours' time. Amanda. Hi, Manita. Yes, the cycling world and the international media have descended on Corsica. Grueling. I think that's the only way you can describe it, but certainly beautiful, beautiful and picturesque scenery there. Thank you very much for that, Amanda Davis there in Porto Vecchio. And finally, Julia Gillard. Well, she was the butt of some cruel jibes in her three years as Australian Prime Minister. Now, in the week that her party ousted her in favor of Kevin Rudd, perhaps the cruelest of them all. A waxwork of Gillard was placed in an unemployment line outside a job center in Sydney to publicize the waxwork museum Madame Tussauds. Jinx. CNN News Center, I'm Monita Rajpal, live at CNN Hong Kong. Thank you for joining us. I'll update the news headlines in just a couple of minutes and we leave you with some pictures of a wet start to the weekend for tens of thousands of music fans camping out at the famous Glastonbury Festival in the west of England.